Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate how to properly load and run your sterilizers. We have a variety of items here. They've already gone through the cleaning process, so they've been through the ultrasonic cleaner to remove bio burden. They've been rinsed. Any non-stainless steel items such as carbide burrs and hinged instruments have been placed in a corrosion inhibitor to reduce rust formation during the sterilization process. They've been dried and packaged. We have a variety of packing material here. We have a pouch, which is a combination plastic on one side so you can see the items, and paper on the other. We have sterilization wrap, and we have an unwrapped item here. It is not best practice to run unwrapped items. If you do need to run something unwrapped, at the very least, place a piece of autoclave tape at the opening of the cassette. That way, once this item has been opened, the tape is broken and we know these items have been used. Otherwise, the cassette just sits in a room and we don't know if the contents inside are clean or contaminated. Before we start loading items, I want to let you know about this beaker here. If you're ever asked to sterilize a beaker, not a common practice in dental offices. In fact, I've never done this in my whole career as a dental assistant, but it happened to be uh, a national exam review question. So you might just get a question like that as a dental assistant. To sterilize this properly, we have to put it in the sterilizer at a 45 degree angle. And the reason for that is the steam created in the chamber needs to be able to come up, hit the beaker, and roll around and float in and touch all the surfaces inside the beaker. If you place your beaker in the sterilizer like this, the steam will not fall down into the beaker. If we place the beaker completely upside down, the steam will get trapped and the top may not get steam. In order to be able to do this in your office, you need a sterilizer large enough to hold the beaker and you need a hanger that will keep the beaker at that 45 degree angle. So not every office has a sterilizer large enough. My office used a statum, which has a smaller cassette for a chamber, and you could not fit a beaker in there. But you might come across that as a test question somewhere. Our clinic has two sterilizers. We have a statum and we have an ultraclave. Both are steam sterilizers. If you noticed, I had gloves on. The instrument packaging is contaminated. So you have to wear gloves. We no longer have to wear utility gloves. Uh, we can switch out to medical gloves or exam gloves. But because my gloves are contaminated, I cannot touch the outside of the sterilizers. So before I touch this, I need to remove my gloves and sanitize, or I can use a barrier to touch the door here. Using a dry paper towel as a barrier, I can touch the door. If the door was open a little wider, I could probably use my elbow to elbow the door open. Inside the sterilizer, let's check our water level to make sure we have enough to get through a cycle. On the ultraclave right here is your water. And as long as the level is somewhere within this green color, you're good. If you need to add water, add distilled water to the spout. To load the instruments, take the trays out. Set them over here on the contaminated side and start loading your items. When you load items, follow your manufacturer's instructions. Never put instruments, 
stacked up like this. The steam needs to be able to penetrate and with everything stacked up, the steam won't be able to get to these middle packages. This ultraclave recommends paper up and single layer. Carry it over to the sterilizer and insert. Pull out another tray and load it up. I need to use one of these larger trays for this cassette here. The last thing I will add to this sterilizer is my biological indicator. Remember, every week we need to test our sterilizers for their effectiveness. So we use the biological indicator. For our steam sterilizers, that is the bacteria Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Make sure you put your biological indicator into a pouch or a wrap so it has the same challenges in getting sterilized that your instruments have. With the trays loaded, I can now close the door and select the proper cycle. But remember to remove your gloves and sanitize your hands. With clean bare hands, I'm ready to touch the outside of the sterilizer door. To close the door all the way, lift the handle up push the door and then push the handle down and you'll hear it click a few times. Looking at the control panel, we need to select the correct cycle. I have choices for unwrapped, pouches, packs, hand pieces, and then my start and stop buttons. There are programmed buttons here that you can set your specific time and temperature if you're running anything special like plastics. You want to choose the cycle that's the most difficult. Since I have a pack in here, which has multiple layers of paper, that's the most challenging. So I will select packs. You'll see that the temperature and the sterilization time is listed. And it also tells you how long the drying cycle will be. I'll then choose start to start the machine. Everything is automated with the ultraclave, which is really nice and convenient. It lets you know what's happening. So monitor the LCD screen periodically for your mechanical monitoring. It will let you know that it's filling the chamber. It will then let you know when it starts the heat up process and when it starts pressurizing the chamber. Since my hands are clean, I can touch the outside of this cassette to pull it out and load it. So I'm going to give it a gentle pull, grab the handle here, the support handle, because these cassettes can be heavy. We don't want to drop them. If you drop them and they dent, they'll no longer create a good seal and you'd have to buy a new cassette. Bring it over here to sterilization. And to open this up, press these two little areas with your thumb and lift up on the lid. Now I do have to put gloves on so I can touch these items over here. In my dental office, all we had was a statum. And a lot of times I ran instruments with a single glove. So I'd have a clean hand to open up my lid, and then I had a protected hand to touch these contaminated packages. The Statum manufacturer recommends placing your paper pouches 
paper side down. And this one will also get a biological indicator. I'll close the lid and I'll have to remove this glove so I can carry it properly. With your clean hands, you can pick up your carrying handle, bring it back to the machine, press it in until you hear it click. On the statum, we have an unwrapped cycle, a wrapped cycle, a lower temperature plastics cycle, air dry. This diamond is your start button and this red button is your stop button. Before I start it up, let's take a look, see if we have enough water in here. Take that lid off, remove this screen, and we can look inside to see that we have plenty of water to get through a few sterilization cycles. If you need to add distilled water to this machine, keep the filter in place as you pour your water in. The filter will help remove any dust particles that may be in the water. And then place your lid back on top. Inside the chamber, I have wrapped items, so I'll select wrapped and start. This machine also has an LCD screen to let me know what stage of the sterilization process it is in. So it'll take a while for both of these machines to warm up. The statum is faster. It's a much smaller chamber. What you're hearing are the machines displacing the air in the chambers. These steam sterilizers work under pressure and heat. So they have to remove the air from the chambers. So they use gravity displacement to do that. Observing the readout on the ultraclave, we can see that it is also going through the heating process. In my experience, usually you can get through a full cycle on your statum before the ultraclave is done sterilizing. One additional thing to show you about the statum is how it vents. It doesn't vent out into the air like your ultraclave. Under the cabinet, we have this bottle that's connected to your statum. The steam vents through this hose and condenses inside the bottle. Make sure you check this every day. We cannot go past the max fill line at the top of the label. So we'd empty it out once it gets close to that line and then make sure there's enough water to meet the minimum fill line at the bottom. So this looks good, no need to change it. Be very careful, this hose gets hot while your statum is running. Now we just have to wait for both machines to go through their cycle. Checking back in on our sterilizers, the statum has finished sterilizing. It is now on its air drying cycle. This statum takes one hour to air dry. Looking at the ultraclave sterilizer, it is still heating up. Checking back in on our ultraclave, it has started the drying process. When the ultraclave vents, it will give off a series of beeps and then it will alert you, letting you know that the door will open. Make sure your hands aren't anywhere near the door because when it opens, all that steam will come out. The drying cycle on the ultraclave is a bit shorter than the statum. It only takes a half an hour. So we'll come back when both machines are ready to be unloaded. Here we are checking back in on our sterilizers. Looking at the readout here, the statum is done. It tells us the cycle is complete and it tells us to press stop to reset that we're ready to remove the cassette. The ultraclave, once it counts down the drying cycle, it just says select cycle, meaning that it's ready for another load. When we unload these, make sure you use clean bare hands to touch the outside. And now that the packages inside are clean, they're no longer contaminated, we can touch them with our bare hands. To open your ultraclave, lift the handle up 
and pull the door towards you. So even though this has gone through the drying cycle, it's still very warm to touch. So be careful that you don't burn your hands on these items. You can either take the entire tray out, if you do that, bring it to the clean side of sterilization. Don't bring it to the contaminated side. Everything in here has to go to the clean side. When you unload your items, check the indicators. Make sure they have changed color. This was pink initially, and through the sterilization process, it turned dark brown. Check all of your pouches for their indicators. Bring them over to the clean side and place them in your box. We use a little basket here so we can then carry them to the rooms. Again, for every item you take out, make sure you check the steam chemical indicator and bring it over here. Put it in your basket so you can disperse it properly. This cassette, remember we had it in wrap. Take a look at the autoclave tape. That changes colors when it goes through a cycle. The last item I pulled out of the sterilizer is the biological indicator. The biological indicator also has its own chemical monitor on it. It'll have a dark stripe once it's gone through the sterilization process. I'll set this over here. We'll take care of that in just a moment. To take care of the items in your statum, pull the cassette out. Hold the carrying handle and bring the whole item over to your clean side. You can then lift the lid up and remove your items. Again, checking your chemical indicators. This one also had an internal separate chemical indicator. This isn't necessary because the pouch already has a chemical indicator on it. And here is our other biological indicator that went through the statum. Return your cassette to the statum so it, someone else can load it up and push it back into position. Now would be a good time to check the bottle under the counter to see if it's filled with water. So the bottle is pretty close to the max fill line. So what I'll do is I'll just unscrew the lid and pour out the water into the sink. I'll then fill it with water to the minimum line to make sure we have an adequate amount of water for it to work properly. Once we've taken our instruments out of the sterilizers. We can then disperse them to the treatment rooms or to storage. Your instrument packages should be placed in a cabinet or a drawer to reduce the amount of dust that will settle on the packaging. The last part that I'd like to show you is your biological indicators. Since these are vials, we take care of these in the office. The ones that have gone through the sterilizer, open them up, And I wrote on the package U for ultraclave, S for statum, so I know which one belongs to which sterilizer. Little ampules in here. There's a little glass vial inside this plastic case. What I'll do is I'll squeeze the vial in this cotton pliers to break it. And I'll shake it a little bit. I want to make sure that there's a little white piece of paper on the bottom. I want to make sure that turns purple. The white piece of paper is a growth medium. So when the 
spores touch that growth medium, if they're alive, they'll grow. I need to place this in my incubator. I'll do the same thing for the one that went through the statum. Take it out, break that glass inside. Make sure the liquid coats that paper, that growth medium. Place it in your incubator. So I've got the ultraclave one here, statum up here. Make sure you label them or that you remember which one is in which slot. In addition to incubating the two vials that went through the sterilizers, I have to incubate a control vial. This control will tell me if the entire batch of microorganisms is viable or alive. If the entire box that we purchased is dead, these would not grow no matter what happened, whether the sterilizers worked or not. So I'm going to take this ampule that was never in a sterilizer. I'll break it so the microorganism can get down and touch that growth medium. And I will incubate this one also. I expect this one to grow. I expect the microorganisms to grow and I'll get a positive result in this one. That's the expectation. The ones that went through the sterilizer, I do not expect those to grow. I expect my sterilizers killed the microorganisms inside. Remember, this is Geobacillus sterothermophilus. It's incubated at 56 degrees, um, not Fahrenheit, 56 degrees Celsius. This is a 24 hour test, so we have to wait until tomorrow to see the results. So I'll check back tomorrow and let you see the results. All right, here we are 24 hours later. And if I look at the vials that went through the sterilizers, they're purple. If I look at the vial that is the control, it turned yellow. If it turns yellow, that's a positive result. It means that the organisms are alive. That's what I expected for the control. I expected the ones that went through the sterilizer to be dead, and that's the results I got. We should track these results in a record booklet. You can buy one of these, you can make your own, you can keep track in a notebook. I'm going to flip to an open page. And I already have it started here of when the test date was. Came, we placed in the incubator yesterday, took it out today and you initial and you write your test results. Test results, negative, they stayed purple, so no color change. Control results are positive, it changed to yellow. Uh, so that's for the ultraclave, let's do the same one for the statum. So these went in yesterday, they came out today. Test results negative, control result was positive. Keep a record of this booklet in case you're ever asked about quality control for your sterilizers. All right, I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching.